Okay, that was the procedure to put first order logic statements into pre next normal form. Here we have an example. Um, and our statement here is given here that exists an x p of x implies that exists an x q of x. Now, again, here you have to be careful. The, um, the, the scope of the first quantifier here, this one, uh, is just this. Recall uh, the operator precedence. So without the parentheses, the, the quantifier here acts only upon the, the in immediate uh, propositional function after it. Okay, so this is like this with parentheses. And the second one, there exists an x, q of x. Here, again, I have this uh, structure here. And this x here is not the same x here, OK? Because each quantifier has its own scope. And the, the variables inside these scopes are different, even if they are named the same name. So that's where we are going to use standardization. But let's apply the procedure we have seen uh, step by step. Here, um, if you remember, the first rule was get rid of anything apart from ends, ors, negations. So I have an implication here. So I'm going to get rid of this implication by applying p implies q equal to not p or q. Okay, so this will be not that exists p of x or that exists q of x. Okay, just application of this, nothing more. Next, um, if you have any negations, apply those. Use the Morgan's laws. Here I have a negation. Therefore, I'm going to uh, apply the Morgan's rule. And this existential quantifier is going to become a universal quantifier. And the negation will go inside. So for all x, not p of x, or that exists x, q of x. Now, I have two different kinds of quantifiers here. So I, I, I cannot uh, directly combine them within a single uh, quantifier. Therefore, I will have to combine them together. But to be able to do that, since they are, they are using the same name, x, for the variables, I have to apply standardization and change uh, or rename one of these variables. So I'm going to do this as for all x, not p of x, or that exists a y, q of y. OK? Um, then now I have for all x not p of x that exists y q of y uh, since uh, due to this last rule combining quantifiers you see um, not p of x here doesn't depend on y therefore I can include it in um, in this statement or can you can look at this the other way around this entire thing, it doesn't depend on x, so I can take it inside this for all x, okay? Let me be more clear about this. So you, this part here doesn't depend on x, okay? So I can, in its entirety, I can take it and put it inside the scope of this for all x, okay? And in this case, it will be for all x, not p of x, or there exists y, q of y, because it doesn't depend on x. Okay. Now here again, in this smaller scope, I will apply the same thing because this not p of x, it doesn't depend on y. So it can go inside this existential quantified portion. Therefore, it will be for all x, there exists a y, not p of x or q of y. Okay, so this, this simply uh, for all x, there exists a y, not p of x or q of y. That's it. Actually, at this point, you are done. This is in pre-next normal form because all quantifiers are uh, collected at the left-hand side, and this is the matrix. It doesn't have any quantifiers in it. But uh, if you like, you can do further manipulations inside this propositional part in the matrix. For instance, you can write this as P of X implies Q of Y. If that makes sense to you, or if that makes your, uh, your procedure easy, whatever you'd like to do. Uh, this is also in uh, pre-next normal form. 
because uh, there is there is no there is nothing in the definition of prenex normal form excluding implications etc inside the matrix as long as you have the prefix and the matrix you have quantifiers in the prefix and no quantifiers in the matrix that's fine this both of these are in prenex normal form you can use whichever makes your life easier okay as a final example on this we'll we'll take the uniqueness quantifier and we'll see the reason why it's not that widely used because a uniqueness quantifier can be expressed in terms of uh, existential and universal quantifiers together okay uh, so that is probably the reason we do not see uniqueness quantifier a lot at least uh, as as much as the other two uh, so let's see how we can express it in 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 an alternative way so that we we do not have a uniqueness quantifier but only existence and universal quantifiers here um, you have to first of all think about what this is saying there is a single x value that makes p of x true okay there is one and only one such x value so imme immediately from the uh, beginning we are talking about existence because we are saying there exists a single okay so i have to start with existence there exists an x that will be my value that makes p of x true and i will also have to express its uniqueness so what i'm going to write here is first of all p of x is true there exists an x p of x is true okay that is the existence part then comes the uniqueness part. So how am I going to express uniqueness? I'm going to say that for all y values, now I'm using a different variable here, a y, because I'm inside the scope of the existence quantifier, so I cannot write, uh, I cannot use the same variable for a new quantifier, okay? So I, I'm, I'm saying for all y, uh, so for all values in the domain. There are two alternatives, either let's say you are one by one picking values in your domain one alternative is uh, whatever you pick whatever value you pick you apply that to p and it gives you a false value if it is not that that specific x value or it's that x value okay so for all values in this domain there are two alternatives either p of y is false or it's the x value, in which case p of x will be true. Okay. Now, if you put this into prenex normal form, what you will have to do is, of course, uh, take care, care about the scopes and uh, the, the distributions here. For instance, since you have for all y along with an or, it doesn't distribute. Uh, but this p of x, since it doesn't depend on um, y, uh, you don't have to distribute it. You can just push P of X inside for Y, right? So you can just write that exists an X for all Y, P of X, and this and here comes here, uh, not P of Y or Y equals X. Okay. If you distribute this um, and over or, well, we didn't talk about these distributions yet, but uh, probably you are familiar with it from earlier studies. If, if you'd like to do that, you can do it. Uh, P of X and not P of Y or P of X and Y of X. Now, what does this say is there exists an X value in my domain for all val Y values in my domain again. Okay, so there is this specific X. Okay, and when I look at all values in my domain, there are two alternatives, this one, or this one. So what is the first alternative? It's it's that P of X is true. Okay, P of X for that specific X value is true. And together with that, whatever Y value I have, it's not true. Or in the second case, again, P of X is true. And the Y value I have picked is that specific X value. Okay, these two cases. Right? So this is how you express the uniqueness quantifier in terms of uh, universal and existence quantifiers. 
Therefore, um, this is the reason, uh, apart from stating something um, in a simple manner in the text or uh, in, in a paper, etc., we do not really see the uniqueness quantifier in use much, especially in proofs, etc., because many procedures are defined on statements involving only existence and universal quantifiers. Next, we will look at inference rules.